Good morning, everybody. And uh, welcome to our service of traditional communion this morning. It's lovely to welcome you here to all saints and welcome to those watching remotely as well. Lovely to have you with us. Welcome back if you've been on holiday and have a great time if you're one of those people who longs for the end of the summer holidays, the school's going back, and then you go on holiday. We know who you are. We've been looking at various psalms over the summer uh, weeks, and we're going to come to Psalm 32 today uh, in our final look at Songs for the Soul um, uh, over this summer period. So we're going to come to that in a few minutes' time. Now, we're not vast numbers in here this morning, but I'm going to set you a challenge, because in the third verse of this first hymn, it talks about loud organs, his glory. And I know that Eric will do his best, but I think that we can probably drown out the loud organ of glory up there. So shall we stand and sing God's praises this morning as we stand and sing, Oh, praise ye the Lord, praise him in the height. Not bad. Please do sit down. And we're going to be thinking about the grace of salvation all through our service today. It's a particular theme uh, in uh, Psalm 32. We think about the forgiveness that we have in Christ. We're going to come to that a little later on. Let's begin in prayer then. And let's just remind one another of God's presence among us. The most important thing we do today is to know that we're here in God's presence, to worship him first and foremost and to go from here, sent out to bless others. The Lord be with you. And we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to come to confession in a moment, as we always do in our services, but let's just have a moment of quiet and just ask God just to search our hearts and minds as we come before him, knowing that we are not as we should be, but in Christ we are forgiven. 
Perhaps there have been hours, days maybe, that we've just forgotten about Jesus in recent weeks. Perhaps there was a less than gracious response in that email. Perhaps there was a pointless high horse we rode in that conversation. Maybe there's pride. There's always self-righteousness. Maybe there was a loose word to somebody. A lack of care and attention to others, even ourselves. Maybe there was just a silly grump that we got in. So let's come before our loving, gracious Heavenly Father and say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the church calendar, it's the 11th Sunday after Trinity, and Anglicans around the world will be using this prayer today. So let's have it in our service as well. Why don't you just glance down the words for a moment? Can we flick to the next one? And back to the beginning. Should we say it together? I know it's in white, but I'm not a sticker for rules. O oh God, you declare your almighty power most chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant to us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, we're going to look at God's word now together, and uh, James and Jane are going to read our Bible readings for us. Morning. Thanks, Nick. Uh, as Nick said, we're going to start with Psalm 32, which is on page 560 of your church Bibles, if you'd like to turn to that now. It says at the top, of David a masculine, there's a few psalms that have that title to it, which is talking about this psalm being a psalm that is meant to impart wisdom, words of wisdom. And I think as we read that, we'll see wisdom in this. So Psalm 32. Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me, my strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then... I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you while you may be found. Surely when the mighty waters rise, they will not reach him. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and bridle, 
for they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the man who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the second reading is from John chapter 15, beginning at verse 9 and finishing at seven, and verse 17. And that's on 1083 of the Bibles in the pews. So as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. Great, thank you guys. Okay, before we come to that, we're going to sing a hymn in a second. But before we even do that, I'm going to ask you to have a chat with the person next to you. What was it in either of those readings that particularly struck you? And if you weren't listening, just be honest with the person next to you and say that. Why don't we do that for a couple of minutes? What struck you? What leapt out? If nothing did, fine. Well, I hope that's got us started, and we're going to come to that a little bit more in a moment. This is um, the last Sunday when we're in kind of holiday style in terms of children's work. So there are um, things for the children to do in the boxes you came in. I hope parents, you may have been able to pick those up. There's plenty of space at the back. If they need a little bit of space during the service, it's absolutely fine. This week, we've got the holiday club coming up, and you'll have seen a few things hiding in various places around in the church in preparation for the holiday club. More on that a little bit later on. Uh, and then next Sunday, we've got our all-age service, which will actually be in here, not in the Marcham Centre uh, this time round for various reasons, but we're going to be in here uh, our, our next Sunday morning, and then we're back to the usual programme for Sunday Club uh, and um, youth, Sunday Youth as well in the morning and in the evening from the 11th of September. Let's stand and sing a next hymn before we come to look at Psalm 32 together. Great is thy faithfulness.
Do please have a seat. And let's uh, pray as we look at God's word together. We prayed earlier, Lord, for a fuller measure of your grace. And we've just been singing of your faithfulness. And we've already begun to think about some of the things in your word that we've read already today. And so we pray, Lord, for that we would see your faithfulness, that we know it more deeply in our hearts and minds now, that we would receive more grace today as we break bread and share wine together, as we feed on your word now. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, do have uh, Psalm 32 open, page numbers on the screen uh, behind me, and we're going to look at that together today. And it is a lovely, lovely psalm. In fact, if you don't remember anything that I say today, remember this. Just go and read it again today, before the end of the day. That'd be really good. And look at verse 4 in particular. Verse 4. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Well, there's a verse for summer 2022, isn't it? Sapped in the heat of the summer. But it rained on Thursday, didn't it? Kind of properly, almost properly. And it was so refreshing, wasn't it? More, Lord, please, I guess we might pray, for the sake of the rugby pitches at least. (laughs) Now, when we were in France last week, we had the most spectacular of storms one evening. Olivia was not very happy about it. But for about an hour or so one evening, we had fork lightning all around the house in which we were staying. There were ear-splitting cracks of thunder. The fireworks at uh, the uh, airfield last night were nothing in comparison. And we had torrential rain. It was the first rain in the Var region of France for over two months. Well, a few days later, after that, I went running up into the hills, baking hot again, Thick woodland, absolutely nobody around. I was trying to find an ancient chapel on top of one of the hills near where we were staying. And as I ran, there were numerous paths up in various directions through uh, the the woodland up, up the hill. I had my Strava running app on my arm, and it was tracking my route. But as I trudged upwards, I was aware that finding my way home could be rather tricky, because every single track looked exactly the same. So I'm going to die in possession of a perfect sermon illustration, I thought to myself. I should have been on holiday, but anyway. Well, I got where I wanted, and then heading back down, hoping I was retracing my steps, I was suddenly very thankful for the recent rain. Because although it was bone dry, again underfoot, the surface of the tracks in the woodland was just silty enough because of the rain, I could see my footprints as I retraced my steps, my footprints from the way up, that is. Unfortunately, the bottom of my trainers. Actually, you don't need to know about the bottom of my trainers, do you? Anyway, (laughs) half an hour later or so, I was there back at the house, cooling off in the pool with an orangina, and it was all good. It has been alarmingly hot, hasn't it, and dry lately. And many Christians have said over these recent weeks that they've sensed that the weather conditions that we've experienced across most of Europe this summer, are perhaps an illustration of the spiritual drought in, uh, of these anxious times in our world at the moment. I was reading this week uh, in one of the newspapers that said this, August was always a silly season, a month in which newspapers would fill their pages with frivolous, offbeat and utterly inconsequential stories, like the record being beaten for the number of people you can fit in a phone box or a study that suggests that cows moo with regional accents. Both real stories in August's past. This August, all the news is deadly serious as we find ourselves engulfed in a dozen major crises at once. The near collapse of the NHS, soaring inflation, terrifying energy bills, seas full of sewage, train strikes, postal strikes, barrister strikes, airport chaos, heat wave, drought, gun crime, and Ukraine, and a perpetually dull conservative leadership contest as well. Oh, for some rain then, some actual precipitation, but also some water of eternal life as well. 
I'm praying that as the world feels anxious and lurches around in seemingly perpetual crises, although I think we're quite good at finding them now, aren't we? The water of God's spirit is shown all the more for what it is. Perhaps that's what God is doing, that he is showing us how wonderful his spiritual reign is. Sweet, refreshing, thirst quenching and available to all who will cry out to God in faith. That's something to pray for our country, isn't it? Something to pray for our parish. Perhaps something to pray for ourselves this autumn. That as the world feels anxious, as we feel that in our hearts and minds, and we probably all do to one degree or another, because we care, that God's spirit is shown all the more for who he is and what he is. And maybe that refreshing rain as it comes, will reveal to us a set of footprints that we would do well to follow, to follow back. Because often I think footprints are following back, not following ahead. Following back to our home with God, to the simple truths of the gospel that perhaps once thrilled us, or that we heard about a long time ago, that we've kind of forgotten in the anxiety of the world. Perhaps footprints, truths, gospel truths that we need to know again like we did before, that we might live them out more fully, that we might hold on to them more readily, and that indeed we might know that hope and that meaning that we all crave in this dried out, arid world. As we conclude our summer psalm series today, Psalm 32, I think is a really good set of footprints, footprints to take us back to the joy of forgiveness. Oh, hang on too far. The joy of forgiveness. It's the heart of the Christian faith. Verse 1, have a look there. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, in whose spirit there is no deceit. What a weight off the shoulders that is. This is the blessing of forgiveness. The heart of the Christian faith. What a relief to have that baggage taken off. From the slightest prickling of the the conscience to the great lumps of guilt that so many people carry around with them, they can be forgiven and everything in between. Lifted off us, that's the idea here. Covered, taken care of, removed forever. That's the idea here. Now, this whole psalm is about that blessing. I think that's the headline, and it covers the whole lot. The happiness that comes from this extraordinary truth, the blessing of forgiveness. Do you know God really does forgive? That's not just an idea that Christians talk about. It's a reality that actually is true. For the believer, all that is wrong, all that is not as it should be, that we were thinking about earlier on in our confession, All the stuff we're aware of, and then the filing cabinet's worth of stuff that we're not aware of, that is wrong about us, will not count against us. Isn't that amazing? It's not that God just ignores it, because that would be an offence to his love. He can't just ignore sin and say, oh, no, it's done. Don't worry about it. It's fine. No. That would be an offence to his love. It would be unjust of him to ignore sin. And an unjust God can never be a loving God. Hence the fullness of the the sacrificial system God gave to his people in the old covenant with temple and sacrifice and priesthood and all the ritual that goes with that. Where the blood of animals was used as a means of atonement for sins. That's the context in which this psalm was written by David. Sins were laid on the animal in the place of the sinner But it was only ever a temporary measure. I mean, that temporary measure, that temporary period was quite a long one, you know, a few centuries. But it was only a temporary measure before a perfect sacrifice for sin came. God himself in the person of Christ. It's what the letter to the Hebrews is all about in the New Testament. Peter references it as well in his letter. 1 Peter 3 verse 18, one of the most well-known verses about What Christ has done for us, for Christ suffered once for sins. The righteous, that is Jesus, for the unrighteous, that's you and me, to bring you to God. 
1 Peter 3, verse 18. Have a scribble that one down. This is the blessing of forgiveness. And it's the blessing that the psalmist could rightly delight in, even under the old covenant system of temple and priesthood and sacrifice that he knew. He was loving it back then. How much more should we be loving it now because of Christ? How much greater is the blessing of sins removed, sins covered, sins taken off because they've been paid for once for all by Jesus? You see, first and foremost and fundamentally and any other F you can think of, there is something, this is something really important to go back to and to keep going back to. God forgives. Isn't that great? Wouldn't it be great to go into this autumn treasuring that truth a little more? and not just being used to it. That would be a really great way to start this final phase of this year, knowing that whatever's happened in the last few weeks or the last few months or indeed the last few years, whatever guilt we carry, we can come to God and in confession and because of Christ, they are lifted, covered, removed from the record. That's why Jesus came. What a, what a blessing. And why would we not want that blessing. Well, the psalmist goes on to explain why we would be very silly not to reach out and receive this great blessing of forgiveness, because that was what he was doing for quite a while, not reaching out for it. Verse 3, when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me and my strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. There's the summer verse. This is the decay of secret guilt. He kept quiet before God. He didn't come to him in confession and thanksgiving and rejoicing because of sins forgiven. He tried to keep silent. He tried to deal with it on his own. He didn't front up and admit his guilt proud and prayerless and quietly, day and night. He just tried to carry on as if nothing was wrong. And the result, what is it? A horrible wasting. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away. It's it's a horrible image, isn't it? Of decreation, of groaning, of energy-sapping guilt. For God's hand was heavy upon... that's, That's God's pricking the conscience, isn't it? God's hand was heavy and hot upon him. Does this sound familiar? Does this feel familiar? It does to me. I mean, even in our human relationships, we know when when things have gone sour, we know that we need to apologize, don't we? And we kind of hang in there in the heat of non-apology for as long as we dare, as long as we can. And that feeling is just horrible, isn't it? I mean, you've probably felt it a million times with a spouse or with family or friends and we just and we just refuse to apologize and we just refuse to to say sorry and front up and that's just a human relationship which is compared to our relationship with god is well nothing like as consequential is it one way human beings often trying to appease secret guilt is just to kid ourselves that sin doesn't really matter we try and do that all the time don't we either because well you know god is benevolent Maybe maybe he won't really mind that I'm like this. I'm trying my best. He's kind. Or, alternatively, whatever we carry as guilt, well, they're just not that bad. Doesn't work, does it? Doesn't work. Because we know that God is holy on every page of the Bible, in every moment of Jesus' life and ministry on earth. We see his holiness And in light of that, in light of God's holiness, we know that we are not. Sin got Adam and Eve removed from the garden, removed from God's presence. And ever since that time, the whole of creation is out of joint, isn't it? I mean, just pick up a newspaper. Just look at the headlines. We can see that the world is out of joint. Now, he he gave his people his laws and he gave his people his whole system of sacrifice and priesthood to deal with sin. You know, was that God overreacting? Couldn't he just you know, got over it and and let us off? No, that kind of thinking doesn't work, does it? It would be an offence to God's holiness, his justice, his love, 
if he were just to say, do you know what? Your sins don't really matter that much. A you know, loving God cannot ignore what's wrong with his world and in the heart and mind of you and I that he's created. He cannot ignore it. That's why he came. That's why Jesus came to show us the way, the way things should be. That's why he died on a cross that we'll remember in bread and wine today. Sin has consequences before a holy God. Of course it does. Otherwise, this whole Christianity thing, it's just a make-up, isn't it? Thank God it does. Because a world without consequences, it's just unthinkable, isn't it? Romans 5, verse 6 to 8. You see, just at the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. None of us are godly, are we really? Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. As is the... uh, the kind of the chorus that runs through Christianity Explored, that, that course which you may have heard about or done. We are more wicked than we ever realize. We are. But we are more loved than we ever dreamed. So let's come out of hiding. Come out of hiding. Let's break the deadlock. Or rather, let's acknowledge that Jesus has broken the deadlock. Admit our sins because look what happens When we do, verse 5, then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave my guilt and you forgave the guilt of my sin. You see, what we try to cover, only God can cover, can remove, can take away. Did you see the repeated verse there from verse, the repeated word from verse 1? Only God has sins covered. You know, we can't cover them. Only he can cover them. And the psalmist then thinks of his friends, his fellow countrymen in Israel. And do you know what? If England, if the world is ever going to be anything like it could be, well, then it needs to start with repentance, doesn't it? Verse 6, Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble. You will surround me with songs of deliverance. You see, to be in close accord with God is true happiness and true relief, isn't it? And here in the middle of the psalm, we see this the wonderful deliverance of a relationship with God. Deliverance from sin and its consequences. Back in verse 3, when he was hiding from God. All the music was of his own groaning and his feelings of terrible guilt. Well, what's the music now? Well, there it is. You surround me with songs of deliverance. The music is wonderful as it's sung over another person who's come to Christ and repented. I think of Zacchaeus and the change in his life in the New Testament. Or another one, we're going to be looking at the book of Jonah over the next few weeks. This bit of this psalm very much echoes what Jonah prays in the belly of the fish. When he comes to his senses and he realizes that actually God is gracious and merciful and that salvation only comes from the Lord. Uh, More on that in the next few weeks. And so I guess the question for you and I is, well, what is the music of your heart at the moment? Is it groaning, the groaning of guilt still? Or is it the sweet song of of deliverance? as one who knows that Jesus has paid the price for you. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17 and following, some of my favourite verses in all the Bible. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, no more decreation, no more decay, and the new has come. And then a bit later, we implore you, Paul writes to the Corinthians, be reconciled to God, God who made him who had no sin to be sin for us, that is Jesus, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. More wicked than we ever realised, but more loved than we ever dreamed. And then the voice changes. David becomes the mouthpiece of God in verse 8, and it's as though he's speaking God's word to the people. Indeed he is. I will instruct you 
says God through David. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Do not be like a horse or a mule. They have no understanding. They've got to be controlled with a bit and a bridle or they'll not come to you. You see, our relationship with God needs to be a growing one, doesn't it? And it is a relationship. Can you see that here? Being a Christian is not about uh, senseless, unthinking control with God kind of pulling the strings or pulling the bit and, and bridle like a rider controls a horse, doing this and doing that for God as we kind of obey him in that senseless, unthinking way going to church, being religious, going through the motions, whatever it might be. No, that's being a donkey, it says here in the Bible. It's being a donkey. No. No, God calls for understanding in his followers. He teaches and counsels his loved ones. Can you see that here? He is father-like, mother-like, teacher-like, doctor-like in his regard and his dealings with us because that is what friends do. The bit that Jane read for us from John 15. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. A servant is a donkey. Instead, I've called you friends. For everything I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. So maybe this autumn will be a great time to get to know your best friend better, Jesus. To go on to maturity with him. Jesus, the one who has laid down his life for you, his friend. We're going to be doing something called the Bible course. We're going to offer that this uh, term a bit more about it, more on this later on in our service. And I hope that in doing the Bible course, that you will find a way to really grow your relationship with him into maturity or further maturity, to get to know our friend better. No more keeping him and his word at arm's reach any longer. You see, a relationship with God is one that goes on to maturity. There's so much more to get to know about him. So I wonder what your plans are for the next few weeks. I'm sure you've got lots of things that you need to do. We, would, we did shoe buying yesterday. It was actually better than I thought it was going to be. But nothing is more important this autumn than getting to know God better. Nothing. Finally, Just the joy of how things should be. And that's where the psalm finishes. Things back how they should be. Things back where they can be and then moving on from there. And we're back where we started, actually. The psalm does a wonderful kind of uh, uh, circuitous, I can't say that. You know what I mean. Round root. Many are the woes of the wicked, verse 10. But the Lord's unfading love surrounds the one who trusts in you. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. You see, this is the joy of how things should be in a relationship with God. No more searing heat any longer. No more groaning with secret guilt. No more secrecy from God. No more cowering. No more woe. Just joy. Blessing. Forgiveness. Yeah, there will be bills to pay, very expensive ones. Yeah, there will be hospital appointments this autumn probably. Yeah, there will be worries and stresses and shoes to buy and disappointments. But when sins are confessed and hearts are opened into going deeper with God, there is joy, there is gladness. There's a different song, there's a different music and it's a song of deliverance and joy over our hearts. This is how things should be. And how things can be because of Jesus. Let's pray. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them. And in whose spirit there is no deceit. And so we lay our deceit before you, Lord, today. The game is up and we want the deadlock to be broken. That from the oldest here to the youngest, that we would move forward into this new season, going deeper with you, knowing that we are forgiven 
knowing that we have a relationship with you, knowing that you call us friends, knowing that despite all the difficulties of life, and we know there are many, in our hearts and our minds there can be a deep joy. So we pray that by the power of your spirit we would know that joy today and in the weeks ahead. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we stand together and declare the faith that we've been thinking about today? Let's say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried, he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life. We're going to continue in prayer now. Please do sit or kneel as we pray. And Lucy's going to lead us in prayer this morning. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you here and we just ask that you come now, that you come and meet us, that you'd fill us and that you'd guide us in our time with you. Lord, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for that most precious gift that you gave to us, that often we take too lightly. Lord, thank you that even though that was such a painful, difficult thing to do, you loved us and that you wanted to have relationship with us. And Lord, we just thank you. Thank you that you desire to be relationship, in relationship with us. Thank you that our, you are our rock. You're the one who we can always trust. No matter what's going on, we can always trust. Lord, I just thank you for all the, all the beautiful things that you've given to us. And Lord, we just think now in our, in our minds of the positive things that have come out of the last few weeks of holidays, time and all through August. Surrounded by so much negative news but there's so much goodness that has come and so many gifts that have come and Lord we just want to focus on a few of those things now and lift them to you and thank you in our hearts for them. Lord I just want to lift to you anybody who's feeling isolated or disconnected in any way. Lord, I pray that they would know their roots are in you, that they are surrounded by you, by love and by comfort. And Lord, I pray also that, um, that we would be able to be your hands and feet, that we would be aware of people who are feeling isolated at the moment. And Lord, with the recent exam results coming out, we thank you. Um, for the results that have happened and thank you that regardless of results that you have a plan for us and a purpose for us that you um, desire to be part of our lives and you create paths for us even if they're sometimes unexpected or don't quite seem the way we were thinking we were going and 
I just want to lift to you all those that are starting in new settings this year, Lord, those starting primary school, secondary school, college, uni, new jobs, and those just entering a new season in their life. Lord, we just lift these people to you. We just pray that they would know your hand on them, that they would um, feel confident and comfortable as they step forward into what you have for them. I just want to pray for those facing financial challenges. I think that's pretty much most of us at the moment. And Lord, for those who have got, of us that have got slightly more money, Lord, pray that you'd help us to see where we can also save so that we can support others, that we can live as family, that we can um, point people in the right direction. Lord, we pray for your hope in those desperate situations that some people are facing. And Lord, we pray that people would come to know you as their rock and their hope and their provider. We pray against despair. We pray against angst. We pray for all those who are worried day in, day out about how they're going to put food on the table or how they're going to heat things this winter. Lord, we just ask that you would direct those people um, into the right. world that has so much it all just seems to be in the wrong places sometimes and Lord we just pray that you would help us to be generous generous in our hearts in our money and in our prayers Lord we lift to anyone anyone to you now that we know who um, is unwell in any way any sickness any pain maybe if you have got some um, illness or there's you know you're feeling unwell or there's some injury you could put your hands on that area or maybe you put a hand on the area of the person that you're thinking of who's got sickness and Lord we just speak your healing into people's lives now Lord we thank you that you're a God who heals today we pray that you'd speed up recovery for people that you would mend cells that you would heal and Lord, we pray for your spiritual healing as well, that people would just come to you and know their peace and their rest and their comfort in you. Lord, we pray that, as um, Nick was saying, that God's spirit is shown even more in us in March and in, in the world. Lord, in those difficult times that your spirit would just be evident, would be glowing. We pray again for those little diamonds of your light shining through. We pray that you keep our eyes open, that you would keep us aware for those moments in every day where we can drop a little bit of heaven into people's lives, where we can point to Jesus and just keep saying, it's all about him. Whether that be through word or practical gift, whatever it might be, Lord, I just pray that you would just keep highlighting 
again and again, our daily mission in bringing people to know you and your love. And Lord, excitingly, we pray for the Holiday Club this week. Lord, we lift to you the practical stuff. We pray that each child and all the leaders would just meet with you, that they would have a fantastic time. Lord, we pray that they would take home truths about you deep in their heart. That the things that were said in this week would last a lifetime. That they would share with their family the good news that you are and that you bring. Lord, we pray for the um, barbecue and the following Sunday. Lord, that anyone who comes along to there um, with their children would, would grow to know you more. such an exciting time and we're just yeah we're just um so excited to see what you're going to do thank you lord and lord we just pray that you would help us to draw closer to you this week that we would just find time to to relax in your presence and just to be with you to know that we can come to you whatever's going on we don't have to worry we can just open up and come to you and lord we ask all these things in jesus holy name amen lucy thank you would you please stand the peace of the lord be always with you why don't we offer one another a sign of that peace? As we... One, two, one, two... As we come to uh, the Lord's table this morning, we're going to sing our next hymn in preparation. And there's a lovely line uh, in the first verse, love to the loveless shown. And that's what we're thinking about today. God in his love shows that love to us who are loveless otherwise. Let's uh, remain standing as we say, my song is love unknown.
please do uh, sit or kneel as we pray. as we come to the Lord's table uh, today, remembering all that Christ has done to offer us forgiveness and grace, that indeed we can all our days be spent with him, days on earth and then days in the new creation of heaven. We remember all that Christ has done in bread and wine today. And we'll distribute the bread and wine in the usual way, just come make your way forward. Uh, either side and if you don't want to receive today either just remain in your seats or if you'd like to come forward for a prayer of blessing just keep your hands by your side and we'll know to pray for you the lord is here his spirit is with us lift up your hearts we lift them to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right to give thanks and praise it is indeed right it is our duty and our joy that at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you send upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and make us a people of your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. And as Jesus teaches, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread so come to this table not because you are strong but because you are weak 
Come not because any goodness of your own gives you a right to come, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. Come not because you are worthy to approach him, but because he died for sinners. Come because he loves you and gave his life for you.
Shall we pray together the prayer after communion when it appears on the screen? There it is. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Well, we're going to come to a final hymn in just a moment, but we heard, uh, prayed for in our prayers uh, about the Holiday Club. Wonderful. And it is going to be wonderful. Um, uh, that's what we're calling it this year. And as you can see on the screen there, it's based on uh, the movie Encanto, which you may have seen. It's got a South African theme. So the Holiday Club, well spotted. Um, and uh, I think the rest of what's on there is correct. I'm just scanning down it. Not sure. Okay, this could be interesting. Um, over across the four days, we've got four particular uh, themes for each day. Chosen, challenge, changed, and champion. And some of the wonderful teaching that we're going to bring out for the children is that they can be friends with Jesus, receive his gifts, uh, and grow in fruitfulness in their lives. That's what we're going to be thinking about with them. And we're using the, uh, some of the inspiration of Encanto from South America um, to help us with that. The, the, there's the, uh, the memory verse for the uh, Holiday Club this year, uh, Revelation 3, verse 20. It'd be lovely if, uh, if you're involved in the Holiday Club or not involved with it directly. It would be lovely if you could be involved by maybe just praying uh, that Bible verse each day for all the children that come. We have got 80-plus children, about, roughly. I'm getting nods from the back. 30 young leaders, which is fantastic. Lots of those young leaders went on the holiday club uh, in years gone past and are coming back to help with it, which is just a wonderful testament to the children's ministry that's gone before and is ongoing today, and about 15 adult leaders doing different days depending on work commitments and other things. So it's going to be really fantastic. There's a huge amount of effort that has already gone, in, gone on behind the scenes, getting ready for it over the last few weeks. And there's going to be lots, obviously, going on this week uh, and to, even today and tomorrow in preparation for it starting on Tuesday. Jill has put together a prayer card for it, um, and which has got what you can be praying for each day for the Holiday Club. And they are on the table on the way out. And if we run out of copies, then we can print off more uh, for you. But that starts on Tuesday and we're really looking forward uh, to it. If you can help straight after coffee today with moving pews around in here to get them in the right place for the Holiday Club... Uh, or helping put up some tents outside. If you could just spare 20 minutes, half an hour, that would be wonderful. If you could do that after the service, that would be great. Also coming up a little bit later on in the autumn, uh, in October, the Bible course, which I mentioned uh, earlier on. And we're inviting our home groups to come to it um, uh, as a group. And it's going to be on Tuesday evenings over eight weeks from Tuesday the 4th of October. It does what it says on the tin. It goes through the big story of the Bible, helping us to get to know God better as we look at his, the fullness of his word, the whole of the scriptures. It's a video-based course, um, and we'll show you a bit more about it in, a couple, in the next few weeks as we get closer to the time. It's going to be half past seven to nine o'clock on Tuesdays in here, but we're also going to offer it during the daytime as well. So if you would like to, you would rather come during the daytime and it's open to anybody, uh, whether you're in a home group or not in a home group, then please come and have a chat with me afterwards. We're just trying to work out what the best daytime slot is to do, to do it in. Um, so you could help with that if you come and have a chat with me afterwards. And the final thing to say is that next Saturday morning is the first of our series of men's breakfasts uh, for the autumn. We do men's breakfasts on the first Saturday of each month. Uh, Saturday the 3rd of uh, September, yours truly is going to try and think of something uh, useful and helpful to say to the guys. Uh, we would love you if you're, uh, uh, you could sign up for the men's breakfast because we need obviously to order food for it. If you could do that by tomorrow through the link on the website, that would be really, really helpful. So that's next Saturday morning. Let's stand and sing a final hymn together. Lord, the light of your love is shining. Let's stand to sing.
you please have a seat for a final prayer? Don't you just love the 80s? And so the final verse of our psalm from earlier, Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous sing, all you who are upright in heart. And so indeed we pray, Lord, that you would shine your kingly brightness into our hearts and minds this day and this season. We pray that particularly for the Holiday Club, that every child and young person who comes into this place over these next few days senses your wonderful grace and brightness and glory and light and goes away from here changed. And we pray that for ourselves today also, that the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit would be upon us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ.